Hello, everyone. Hey. Howdy. Welcome. We're just about at one o'clock, so we'll give another minute or so for folks to come in. If you would go ahead and um, turn your video on and we'll go ahead and we'll keep everybody muted. Um, that sometimes helps us stream a little more smoothly. And then when you need to speak, you can um, unmute yourself or um, we also make use of the chat feature. Yeah, very good. Okay, just about everybody's here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It's good to see everybody. A little strange this week because we're remote, but that's all right. If it helps us get started into the semester a little more safely, then, um, then that's understandable. So the very first thing I'd like everybody to do is go ahead and type your first name or your nickname into the chat. Um, that'll be my record that you attended today. So if you would go ahead and do that for me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. So welcome to Cells and Molecules. Um, my name is Dr. Piscopo and I'm gonna be your instructor this semester. Just to give you a little bit of background um, about me, um, I am a veterinarian. I actually grew up in Massachusetts. I know some of you are from Massachusetts. Um, I grew up in Mass. I did my undergraduate training at uh, the University of Vermont. I studied animal science there and got my degree. Um, and then I went to North Carolina State to go to veterinary school. And um, I got my veterinary degree there and I ended up staying in North Carolina for about 10 years. Uh, I practiced veterinary medicine there. Um, I worked in a practice that saw all different kinds of animals. Um, my particular area was primarily uh, horses, equine medicine. Um, but again, we saw a little bit of everything, whatever came through the door. Um, we would take care of. So um, I was, uh, my next stop was um, in New Jersey. I was married at the time and my husband um, got a job transfer to New Jersey. So um, well, actually I'm a little ahead of myself. When we were still in North Carolina um, uh, and we started having kids, um, I actually came out of practice for a bit and um, I was offered a chance to go back to school. I was offered uh, what's called a fellowship to go back to school and get a PhD. Um, I did that as well. Uh, that was also at North Carolina State. Uh, so I have a, in addition to the veterinary degree, I also have a PhD in physiology, human physiology. Um, as I said, we moved to New Jersey when my kids were little. Um, I had always intended to go back into veterinary practice, but uh, I was injured, unfortunately. Uh, I injured my spinal cord and I had some long-term effects from that. So I had to retire from uh, clinical practice, um, which was very hard, very sad for me, but uh, but I had such an excellent uh, education, such an excellent veterinary education that um, uh, there were other things that I could do. And one of them was teaching and I had always um, enjoyed teaching. So um, I moved back up to New England 
with my two kids after I got divorced and got a job at Keene State. Um, I'm what's called an adjunct professor. That means I only work part-time at Keene State. I also work at other schools um, in New Hampshire. Um, so, and I teach a whole bunch of different courses. Um, I teach biology, I teach uh, evolution, I teach genetics, um, cell biology, um, microbiology, all kinds of different things. Uh, and I really enjoy teaching. It's been, um, it's been a great job, a great profession to be part of. So this is a class that I particularly enjoy teaching um, because we do get to ha have students in this course that are science majors and non-science majors. So um, it's a nice mix. Um, if you've had a chance to go through the start here module in Canvas, you saw that there's a little survey I'd like you to complete this week so I can get to know everybody a little bit better. Uh, that helps me to sort of gear the class uh, toward things that people are interested in. I can use examples that um, people find interesting um, and hopefully draw, draw people into biology a little more. Um, I know everybody has had biology at some point in their educational career, um, but for many of us, it, it was a long time ago. So um, some of what we do, particularly at the beginning of the course, some of you are gonna to find to be just review. And if that's you, great, um, you'll, you'll get a good start. Um, if you are not particularly familiar with biology, if it's been a long time for you since you've talked about biology, um, we'll get everybody up to speed um, at the beginning of the course. So what we're gonna be doing today while we're together is talking about how the course is structured um, so you'll um, understand the course policies and how our schedule runs and things like that. Obviously, we're still in the midst of a pandemic, and so things are always a little up in the air because of changing uh, pandemic conditions. Um, but right now, we're um, planning to be back in the classroom next week, um, and hopefully I will um, get to meet you all in person then. As I said, um, our Canvas course is up and running. And if you go into that Canvas course, you can find a whole lot of information, including um, sort of a self-start uh, series of instructions to get you familiar with how the course runs. So we'll go through some aspects in the, some of the uh, policies in the syllabus. We'll take a look at our schedule and how to interpret our schedule. Um, and we'll talk about um, anything anybody has any questions about uh, as we go forward. <clears throat> so if you haven't already, go ahead and type your nickname or your first name into the chat for me. That's going to be my record that you attended our meeting today. Um, just go ahead and type that in. Thank you very much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and pull up um, our Canvas course. So that's what you should be seeing. Uh, hold on just a sec. Let me try this again. That's what you should be seeing on your screen right now. You should be seeing actually the modules page of our Canvas course. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on home in the left-sided menu. And this is what you can uh, find on our homepage, cells and molecules. This, I like to think of our homepage as sort of our home base because you can come here at any time during the semester and find some important information and some important links and so on. Uh, for example, the link for our syllabus and schedule is right here up at the top. Um, there's Zoom information here on the page. 
Um, and if you scroll down a little further, you can find um, a URL here for a YouTube channel that we're gonna be using during the semester and a dedicated playlist for the class. Um, I do um, record certain lecture videos and I'll post them in this playlist. Um, when we do have to meet over Zoom like we're doing today, I will also record those meetings and post them on the playlist here in case anybody needs to go back and take a look at things. Um, it's a little bit confusing what our new COVID procedures are. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of the same things this semester that we've been doing. Um, we're going to be doing surveillance testing for the whole campus. So everybody will be going to get um, a nose swab and a, a PCR test or a rapid antigen test this semester um, once a week, um, just like we've been doing. So no surprises there. But there are some changes to our policy this semester regarding your vaccination status. And that's actually good news for um, people who are vaccinated. Uh, it's become very clear during uh, the pandemic that COVID is a very different disease in people who are vaccinated versus people who are unvaccinated. So of course, we're all gonna be wearing masks when we're inside buildings. So we'll be wearing masks in the classroom. Um, but um, if you are tested for COVID and it comes back positive and you are a vaccinated person and you have no symptoms, what's new this semester is that you are welcome to come to class. You just have to be sure to have your mask on. In fact, you're gonna to wanna to stay masked pretty much everywhere you go. Um, while you monitor yourself for any um, symptom formation. But if you're vaccinated and you're asymptomatic, you have no symptoms, you're welcome to come to class because the chances that you are spreading virus to anyone else are very, very low. Um, if you're not vaccinated, and you test positive, we ask that you stay home. Um, and of course, it's very important that you alert me um, if you test positive and you need to miss class. It's important that you let me know for any reason that you're missing class. Um, and the best way to do that, you can hear my birds uh, yelling at each other over here. The best way to do that is to message me through Canvas. If you go into our Canvas page, you'll see in the menu that there's a link called Inbox. And when you click on that link, you can send me a message through Canvas. And that's how I would like you to contact me this semester. And I'll tell you why I'd, I'd rather you do that than just send me an ordinary email. As you can imagine, I get um, an awful lot of email every day. I can get hundreds of emails in a day. And sometimes emails from students get lost in all of those messages. If you message me through Canvas, I get those emails separately. So I can always see what's coming in from students if you message me through Canvas. So just to make sure that I get your message quickly and efficiently, um, I'll have you message me through Canvas if you want to uh, get up with me. Um, and that's how we'll handle that this semester. So if there's any time that you need to miss class, um, send me a message and let me know. Um, and we will go from there, whether that's due to some COVID-related issue or if that's due to some other illness or let's say a family emergency or anything like that, um, just send me a message. Um, I will work with you um, if you're missing class for um, you know, a reasonable excuse. Um, and certainly if any of you are involved in athletics at Keene State and uh, you need to miss a class or two because of athletic competitions and such, um, just let me know. Um, I will say that whether you have a positive COVID test or not, uh, if you have any symptoms, especially of respiratory disease, 
through the semester, um, I would ask that you stay home, okay? Um, whether you've got a positive test or a negative test, um, whether it's COVID or a cold or anything else, um, if you're not feeling well and you have symptoms, um, please go ahead and stay home. It's the safest way for us to uh, proceed and it's the, the best way for us to try to limit transmission of infectious disease right now um, and keep us all safe. Um, if you miss class because of illness, again, I'm gonna work with you um, and help you stay um, up to speed um, on things going on in the course. And if you need an extension because of illness, if there's an assignment coming up and you need an extension because of illness, I'm gonna work with you, okay? But again, you have to message me or I'm not gonna know. I'm not gonna know that you're sick. I'm not gonna know why you're missing class. So just be sure to do that. Be sure to send me a quick message to Canvas um, so I know what's going on with you. <clears throat> so, if you so if you're sick, stay home. <laughs> if, you, if you're not sick, but you test positive, um, you, you need to check in on the COVID policies um, on the Keene State uh, webpage so that you know to do certain things depending on your vaccination status. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen here. You should be looking at the homepage on Canvas. One of the things that um, I have available to us is again, this dedicated playlist on YouTube that has recordings on it that are primarily narrated lectures, video lectures. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that link right now. It's gonna take us over to YouTube, to our playlist. And what you're gonna see is over here on the right, you can see the name of the playlist at the top, cells and molecules in bio 110. And then you can scroll down and see what's posted up there right now. There's lots of different lectures up here right now. You'll notice that when I record a lecture, I do it in multiple parts. Um, so for example, there's a lecture up here. Let's see which one I can pull up. There's a lecture up here called Prokaryotic Cells, and that lecture is in two parts. So here's one of two, and here's two of two, okay? So when you notify me that you have to miss class because of illness or, or some other reason, um, I may send you to that playlist. I may um, ask you to watch the lectures that were scheduled for um, at home. And um, you'll find those lectures up in that playlist. Um, it's important to note that if you are feeling well and uh, you don't have any issues going on, we do want you to come to class. <laughs> we are holding classes in person this semester. So um, please don't feel that um, we don't need you to come to class because we do, the class is, um, is a vital, it's a vital place and it needs all of us participating um, to make it so. So please uh, come to class unless, like I said, unless there's illness or some other reason that you need to be out of the classroom. But yeah, that will be available to students who have to be absent so that they don't fall too far behind um, in lecture material. Now, when it comes to our laboratory exercises, our laboratory exercises are not recorded. So there's no chance to uh, watch a laboratory exercise on video. Um, but if you have to miss a laboratory, um, what we can do is just hook you up with one of your classmates. Um, and next week when we come together in the classroom, we can exchange information with each other we can share uh, email addresses or cell phone numbers or whatever you're comfortable with. And then uh, you can contact a classmate and get the notes and get any data that was collected during the experiments. Um, so you'll be able to complete lab assignments. 
Um, so hopefully we'll be able to keep everybody on track, um, even if they have to be out due to illness. Um, I'm gonna go back into um, Canvas here. I'm gonna close out of this YouTube window. Whoops, that wasn't quite what I meant to do. Hold on just a sec. As I said, I think that most of you um, have at least gone into Canvas to take a look because I have received completed surveys from uh, most of you. If you have not had a chance to go into the Canvas page and do that start here module, please go ahead and do that as soon as you can. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Get us back into Canvas. So we're back here on the home screen, the home page in Canvas. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the modules link. This course is organized week by week in the modules section in Canvas. So this first module is just some resources for you in case you wanna to quickly get to, for example, the Canvas guides which are for questions about um, how, how to move around in Canvas, the academic calendar, uh, information about the Wellness Center and our current COVID policy. Just some quick links for you here if you need them. And here's that start here module. And you can see it's just five steps for you to go through um, to get you started in the course. The rest of the modules are going to be named according to the week that we're in. So here's the week one module for this week. And you'll notice that right at the top, there's something called the to-do list. You're going to want to make sure that at the start of each week this semester, you click on the to-do list to see exactly what's going to be happening that week. This is going to let you know what's going to happen in class. It's gonna let you know if there are any assignments you need to be completing that week. Um, it'll, it'll just summarize for you everything that you need to know for the week so you don't miss anything. So of course, this week we're meeting remotely over Zoom. On Tuesday, we're talking about the course. And on Thursday, when we get together, we're gonna to have a lecture about the science of biology. Notice that there are no assignments for you to complete this week. There's no homework for you to complete this week, but that student survey needs to be to me by Friday night, if you haven't already. If I go back into modules, you're gonna see that there's a, a couple of slide sets here. Um, something called introduction to the course, which is just, again, uh, sort of the mechanics of how the course works, what we're talking about today. And then there's a set of PowerPoint slides for Thursday's lecture, Science of Biology. Now, the reason I post slide sets up here, the reason I post those is because some students find them very helpful in terms of taking notes during lectures. Um, this is uh, something to really, to jot down in your notes today and put a little star next to. My PowerPoint slides are complete. They're, they're really quite complete. And what I mean by that is everything that you need to know for homework assignments and for examinations comes right off those PowerPoint slides. So when you come to class, when we're in person and I'm giving you a lecture on a topic, you should not need to write down everything that is on the slides that you're seeing because you have the slides available to you in Canvas. In fact, I really do not recommend that you sit in class and try to write down everything you see on the slides, as well as everything that I'm saying. Don't do that to yourself. You're gonna drive yourself crazy if you try to do that. You have the PowerPoint slides. 
So you do not need to write down anything that's on the PowerPoint slides. All you need to write down in your notebook is anything extra that I'm saying. So what most of my students do in their notebook is simply write down, you know, slide number one, and then any notes, any additional things that I'm saying about the material on that slide. And then when you get home and you're studying, you can just open up the slide set on Canvas and open up your notebook and go through the slides. Like I said, if you try to sit in class and you try to write down in your notebook all the information that's on the slides, as well as all of the things I'm saying, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. You're gonna be writing constantly and you're not really gonna be able to listen to what I'm saying. So I really don't recommend it. And that's why I give you a copy of the slides, a digital copy of the slides. Some of my students actually open up the slides on their laptop during lecture and they take their additional notes right on the slides. If you're not familiar with PowerPoint, when you open up the slides, there's a little place at the bottom to write notes. So some students actually do that. They take their notes directly on the slides during lecture. That's fine too. Whatever you find most efficient for yourself. The one thing that you're gonna wanna do though, at least once a week is go back, go back into the lectures and outline the material that was presented in the lecture. Most of the lectures in this class are gonna have somewhere between about 25 and 30 slides. When we get to exam time, it's usually maybe three or four lecture topics that are gonna be covered on each exam. If you try to study for an exam by going through the PowerPoint slides, you are not gonna be successful. Okay, think about that. Let's say there's four lectures on the exam and each one of those has 30 slides in it. That's 120 slides that you're gonna try to learn. Okay, don't do that to yourself. Instead, again, about once a week, I recommend, take those 30 lecture slides and, and the notes that you took for yourself and condense them into some kind of an outline, some kind of study material that you're gonna be able to use when the exam approaches. Some students like to make flashcards. Some students, again, like outline form. Um, whatever it is that you find useful for yourself to take that big bulky lecture, 30 slides, and condense it down into something that you can memorize. As I said, my lecture slides are quite complete. So most of what you need to know is right, in the, right on those slides. Your job is to get it down into some uh, form that is succinct enough, compact enough that you can memorize it. One of the nice things about PowerPoint, if you're not familiar with PowerPoint, is that you can open up a lecture in PowerPoint and in the menu at the top, you can choose to put the lecture into outline view. And what it will do is it will just get rid of the slides and instead put all the information into an outline for you. Now, there's gonna be, um, you know, there'll be like titles of the slides and so on in that outline. So you'll have to go in and clean it up a little bit. But I mean, there, work's done. The work's done for you. And it's a heck of a lot easier to memorize information that is in an outline form than to try to memorize 120 slides. 
So uh, one of the skills that we practice in this class <laughs> is the importance of making study materials for yourself, the importance of taking a lecture and creating some kind of a document or a stack of flashcards that you're then going to use uh, when exam time comes so you can memorize the material more effectively. All right. So if I click on our to-do list for this week, um, da, 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 da. oh, we already said this. Um, there will be weeks when you have some lecture homework to do for me. And in Canvas, that appears in the form of a quiz. Canvas calls it a quiz. Now, there is no lecture homework to do this week, but we'll start lecture homework next week. If I scroll down to the week two module, which is next week's module, you can see in the module there's already your first lecture quiz, week two. And you can see it's worth 20 points. That's pretty typical for our lecture homeworks. Now, the point of the lecture homework, the point of these lecture homeworks that you're gonna be doing most weeks is twofold. Number one, it's gonna help you see if you understand what was in the lecture. It's gonna help you see whether or not you understood it. When you take these lecture homeworks, these lecture quizzes, you're gonna be able to take all the time you need. So it's not really a, a quiz in a formal sense. When you open it up and begin, you can take as long as you want to finish it. You can also have your notes right there with you. I want you to use your notes when you take these lecture homeworks because I want to make sure that you understand the material, that your notes are correct and that you understand the material. So you'll sit down and open it up and then begin and take as long as you need to finish it. The important thing to understand though is once you start it, you have to finish it. You only get this one try at it, in other words. So you're gonna sit down, open it up and complete it. Typically there's about 10 questions. I'll say 10 to 15 questions per lecture quiz. So complete it and submit it. And you're gonna get some automatic feedback because again, in Canvas, these quizzes, at least with regards to multiple choice questions, they will, uh, Canvas will provide you with feedback right away. Canvas will tell you if you got the answer right or wrong right away. So you get some instant feedback on what you got right and what you might've missed. Um, you have to finish it once you begin and you're only allowed to take it once. You're only allowed to submit the homework assignment one time. And that's because you do get instant feedback. Um, it wouldn't be fair to take it a second time because Canvas would have told you already what you got right and wrong. So you get all the time you want, you get to use your notes, but you can only take it once and you, can only, uh, and you have to finish it once you begin. That's your lecture homework or your lecture quizzes. So it'll make sure that you understand the lecture material. It'll at least help to make sure you understand the lecture material. The other thing the lecture quizzes will do is it will introduce you to the way I ask questions. These are all, at least for the most part, for the vast majority, these are all multiple choice type questions but they're all different kinds of multiple choice question. In other words, sometimes uh, the question might be fill in the blank. Fill in the blank, the missing word in this statement. And you'll have a choice. You'll have a choice of the, the best words to fill in that blank. Sometimes it might be a true false question. 
I like true false questions. Um, sometimes I might ask you to choose a term, a correct term out of a pair of terms. Um, sometimes I might ask you to tell me what's wrong with a statement or what's wrong with a list of terms or something. I ask all different kinds of multiple choice questions. Um, so you'll get a chance to see what kinds of questions I ask and how I ask questions before we get to the exam. I think that takes a lot of the anxiety out of exams when you have a good sense of what kinds of questions the professor likes to ask. All of the material, all of the material that I'm gonna test you on, that I'm gonna examine you on in the exams comes from the lecture. You have a textbook to use this semester, but the textbook is supplemental. So what do I mean by that? I want you to use the text. It's a great text and it's free. <laughs> it's open educational resource, so it's free. Um, you can certainly purchase the textbook if you'd like to have it. Some people like a physical, a hard copy of a book, that's fine. It's reasonable, I think it's like $50 to buy it. But you don't have to buy it, you can use it online. You can even download a copy of the textbook to your computer, um, but it is supplemental. So what I mean by that is, if we go through something in lecture and it doesn't really make complete sense to you, or you have some additional questions about what we talked about, go to the textbook, see what the textbook has to say about it. But understand that I'm only going to test you on what's in lecture. So if there's information in the textbook that we don't talk about in lecture, you're not responsible for it. The textbook is really complete and really detailed, and there's inf information in that text that we don't go over in this course. So use the textbook, but don't bother, don't trouble yourself memorizing information in the textbook that we didn't talk about in class because you're not going to be that's not going to show up on any exam. All right, the other type of assessment or assignment that I use um, will be related to the labs. So we will have laboratories periodically. Most of the students um, enjoy the labs in this course. I think they're um, they're interesting and they're um, they're not terribly difficult labs, but they're, they're interesting and fun. So um, there will be assignments associated with the labs. Um, sometimes the assignment involves answering questions. And uh, again, that'll look like a quiz in Canvas. But just like with the lecture homeworks, you'll have the chance to take all the time you need on it. You'll be able to use your lab notes. You won't, you know, um, but you will only be able to submit the assignment once. There are other labs where I'm going to ask you to do things like make a graph or um, interpret some data that we generate. But um, those those assignments will all be conducted through Canvas. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the modules page again so that I can pull up our syllabus. Um, I had a quick question. Yes, please. Are you going to have us write like full blown lab reports, like the procedure and everything, or is it just going to be like the assignments? So that you that's a great question. In this course, you will not be writing laboratory reports for me. Um, you, there are other courses that you'll take uh, in your time here where um, you will write full laboratory reports. That's not something that we do in this course. Um, we are much more focused on you understanding why we did our little experiment, what was the purpose of the experiment, and being able to 
look at the data that we generate and interpret it and, and understand what it means. Um, that's where the focus is for us. So you may be writing some short answer questions and things like that, short essay questions for me, but you will not have to write full laboratory reports for me. And hopefully that's good news. Hopefully that's good news. For yeah, me. it is. I never really enjoyed writing full laboratory reports. <laughs> I have a question yes. that sort of plays off the previous student's question. Okay. For the exams, will they have a lot of essay questions or are they multiple? mostly multiple choice? Mostly multiple choice. If there are essay questions, Canvas, if Canvas calls them essays, they're really short answer questions. So it's, you know, a couple of sentences, not a true essay. The other thing I put on exams is I always put at least one or two uh, extra credit questions. So there's always an opportunity to earn a couple extra credit points on exams as well. I really work hard in this class to uh, gear exams to be um, doable by, I'll say the average student, whatever that is, the average student in about an hour. So in other words, I try very hard to keep the length of exams very reasonable because the last thing I want is for a student not to be able to finish an exam. Um, that used to drive me crazy when I was a student. Um, if I couldn't finish an exam, I couldn't show the professor what I knew. Um, so um, I gear the exams to take about an hour, even though you'll have an hour and 45 minutes um, to do the exam. I know a lot of us get a lot of um, testing anxiety. A lot of us um, just experience some miserable stress around exams. Um, in this course, um, I try real hard to take some of that stress away. Um, and again, part of that is because you'll have had those lecture homeworks. So you'll have some experience with uh, the questions I ask. And um, I do try to limit how many questions are on the exam. Good questions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so um, I'm going to go into our syllabus so we can take a look at a couple of important things uh, for you to make note of. Again, you can pull this syllabus up anytime during the semester on Canvas. I will keep it up to date if things change. Um, sometimes we get a little behind in our lecture schedule. Sometimes we even get a little ahead in our lecture schedule. And if that happens, I will make adjustments um, directly on our schedule on the syllabus. So you can always have the most up-to-date version of it available. I apologize for my birds. I don't know how well you guys can hear them, but um, they're having a bit of an argument this afternoon that I can't really figure out. So right here on the first page, you can see uh, office hours. Um, I am on campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I teach most of the day. So what that means is I have a very limited amount of time where I'm in my office um, available for you to pop in and, and see me and ask questions. Um, it's Tuesdays from noon to about 12.45. Now, if you can't make that time and you need to contact me, if you need to talk to me, we can still meet. We just have to make an appointment. Um, sometimes I meet with students over Zoom. Um, and sometimes we manage to just talk with each other over uh, email, just by messaging. Um, so those are, um, those are my, that's my office time where you will find me in my office. Um, and I just realized I didn't put my office number down in there for you. Um, I'm actually in the Science Center, very close to where we're going to be meeting for class. We're going to meet in um, room 351. Oh, yes, I did. It's right here. My office is right across the hall in room 357. So 
if you pop by my office on a Tuesday or a Thursday, you might find me in there. But the only time you can reliably find me in there is Tuesdays uh, between 12 and 12.45. Our uh, class meets in 351 in the Science Center. This is the link for our online textbook if you need to access that. There's lots of information um, in here about the purpose of the course. I'm just gonna pass through that right now. So we can take a look at this. This shows you how I and how um, I grade you in the class. The class is graded according to a point system. Everything you do for me will give you the opportunity to earn points. Um, I'm noticing there's a typo right here I'm gonna need to fix. Um, the breakdown of your grade is gonna be the examinations. There's gonna be three exams during the semester worth hundred points each. And then there's gonna be a final exam. Now, the thing is the final exam for us is really just another exam. I'm not gonna be giving you a cumulative final exam. It's really just your next lecture exam, okay? So you might wanna make a note of, note of that for yourself so that um, as we get to the end of the semester, um, you can relax about the final, it's not cumulative. So each exam, each of those four exams is worth 100 points each. Then we're gonna have those lecture quizzes I talked about and the lab activities. And that um, comes in for a total of about 150 points. So we come in at about uh, 640 total points. If that's correct, that may not um, be 100% correct. This is an important thing to note right here. Um, the examinations are gonna be worth 100 points each. But when it comes to the other assignments, the number of them and the points associated with them are approximate. So eight at 20 points each, you know, we may end up only having seven, or there might be some that have 22 points on them instead of 20. Um, the point values for the assignments are subject to change, but the majority of your grade is gonna come from the examination scores. So just keep that in mind. This is the breakdown of the letter grade system. Um, you need a 92% to earn an A in this course. You need 92% of all of the points that are available for you to earn. Students have to earn at least 58% of the points in order to pass the class. Hopefully that won't be a problem for anybody. Um, examinations, um, Obviously, sometimes things happen, especially during the pandemic, and students are not able to be in class on the day of the exam. If that happens this semester, um, we will simply make accommodations um, to have you take the exam at a different time or to have you take the exam remotely. Um, again, it's very, very important that you message me if you can't take the exam as scheduled. Um, if you wake up on exam morning and you're not feeling well or um, something else comes up, it's critical that you message me before the exam takes place. Um, so I know why you're not coming, why you're not there. We're going to be taking the examinations in the classroom, but on our laptops. So the exams are going to be delivered through Canvas, just like the homeworks will be delivered through Canvas. Um, the other thing that we're gonna be doing this semester, which is new, I think, for Keene State, although I have used this at other colleges, is we're gonna be using an app during the exam, an app that is present in Canvas called Lockdown Browser. You may have seen it in the, um, the left-sided menu in Canvas. It's called Lockdown Browser. And what it is is just a little bit of added security um, for examinations on Canvas. What it does is it prevents students from accessing other websites while they're taking the exam. So, you know, everyone's on their laptop taking the exam. 
And as an instructor, you know, we, we're proctoring, we walk around the room and we make sure that no one's doing anything they shouldn't be doing. Um, but what Lockdown Browser does, like the name suggests, is it locks your computer into the exam during the exam. So um, not that I would expect any of you to do it, but um, there are some students who will take advantage and um, will try to open up, you know, windows and Google some questions and things like that during exams. So it's just a security feature to make sure that there are no shenanigans going on um, during the exams. Now, um, next week, when we get back together in person, we'll talk a little bit more about Lockdown Browser because I'm going to make a practice quiz for you um, using this Lockdown Browser. So you can just get a sense of um, what it's going to be like during the exam. Uh, that'll be coming up next week. So it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to be concerned about. It's just a tool that uh, we're going to use this semester while you're taking the exams in the classroom. Um, and it will help keep those exams more secure for everybody. All right, so there's some things here that I had already talked about with you. Um, there's some information that we've already talked about about how important it is to make your study materials so you're not trying to memorize um, entire lecture sets. Um, if anybody in the course has, uh, in the class, has any kind of a um, disability that they would like me to know about, um, there's an opportunity in the student survey for you to do that. Um, there's some information in here about academic honesty and um, how important I take that. Um, and then there's some information about inclement weather. We are at the time of the year when we do have things like late openings and, you know, uh, campus closings due to weather. Um, I am a commuter. I live in Hillsborough, so I have about a 45 minute commute down to Keene. And every once in a while, I can't get to campus um, because of weather related things. If that happens, if I can't make it, I'm going to let you know as soon as I know. And generally, what I do is I post an announcement. So you're going to want to make sure um, in Canvas that your settings are um, arranged so that you get those announcements, you know, on your phone, essentially through your email. Um, I will let you know as soon as I know. Um, now, the other thing that I ask of you um, is if you ever come to class and I, I'm not there, if you ever come in at one o'clock and I'm not there, I ask you to give me a 15 minute courtesy wait just in case, just in case I'm late, just in case I'm hung up somewhere, um, please give me 15 minutes. And if I don't show up by then, you're free to go, okay? If I don't show up and there's no announcement, I didn't send out any announcement, um, you're free to go at that point. Something has obviously kept me from getting to class um, and I'll get in contact with the class as soon as I can at that point. All right. Now I'm just going to roll down and, and show this uh, tentative schedule. Just to be sure that everybody um, is reading it the same way. Again, I try to um, produce the schedule for you week by week so it matches the modules on Canvas. I've got the dates for you of the Tuesdays and the Thursdays in each week. And then what lecture topic we're gonna to be talking about in class, or if there's a laboratory, what that topic is gonna to be. You can see that the exams are highlighted. Um, so you can mark those down in your own personal calendars. So you know when, when they're coming up. Um, and the other thing that is on this tentative schedule over here on the right is the assignments for the week. It's important to note that these are for the week. 
So for example, when it says student survey this week, even though it aligns with Tuesday, January 18th, that's not when the survey is due. All right, the survey is due by uh, Friday at midnight. If you go to Canvas, you'll see that. Um, so next week you have your first lecture quiz, but it's not due on Tuesday, January 25th. In other words, it's just due that week. And you'll have to go to Canvas to find the due date. You'll have to go into Canvas to find the due date. So Canvas should really be your primary resource for the course. The reason I give you a written schedule in the syllabus is just so you can see the course at a glance, just so you can see the whole course presented out so you know when things are happening across the whole semester. But the details are all in Canvas. Remember, it's really important to click on that to-do list at the start of each week so you don't miss something. You don't have an assignment you know, sneak up on you or a due date sneak up on you. All right, who's got questions? Who's got questions about anything I've been saying? Questions, questions, questions. All right, very good. Uh, is there a midterm? Um, there is no classical midterm in this class because we have a full four exams. Um, what I do after the second exam, so after the second lecture exam, um, what I will do is post um, into, um, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called, um, in the self-service section on the Keene State website, uh, my KSC, if that's what it's called, um, I'm going to post a midterm grade for you, even though you don't have a classic midterm exam in this course. You have three lecture exams and then a final exam. Um, so essentially, you have four lecture exams in here. I do post that mid midway grade for you. Not so it's not that it's um, you know going to count or anything because we're only halfway through the course, but at least it gives you the chance to see how you're performing in the middle of the course. Remember, on Canvas, you always have access to how you're doing in the course. If you click on grades in Canvas, it's going to show you your percentage. It's going to show you what percentage of all the available points you have earned so far. It's also going to show you if you're missing assignments, if you forgot to hand in anything, or um, if there's been no grade entered for something. So you can access your grades at any time you can access how you're doing in the class at any time through Canvas. I think that's a really nice feature. You don't have to wait for your instructor to post a midterm grade for you. Um, you can find it right on Canvas. And of course, if you start to get in trouble, you know, if you take the first exam and you don't do very well on it and if you start to find yourself getting in trouble, don't, don't just let it go. Don't just let it go. Get in contact with me um, and we'll see if we can change up your approach um, to studying and um, try to help you improve. The last thing you wanna do is just sort of um, ignore your grades <laughs> until the end of the class. That's, that's not what you wanna do, okay? Um, don't let those kinds of things slide. Um, you should know that in this class, in this class, there is no opportunity at the end of the semester to do extra credit. Jot that down in your notes and put a star next to that. There is no chance for you to do anything extra at the end of the semester in order to bring your grade up. You have lots of chances during the semester to earn points. You'll have um, lecture quizzes or homeworks. You'll have lab assignments. Um, you'll have lots of opportunities to earn points. 
And you're going to want to earn as many of those points as you can, because that'll help take the pressure off a little bit when it comes to exam time. Who else has questions? Um, do we need a C or a CD for our major? Um, it depends on uh, your major. For biology majors, you have to earn a C in this class in order to move on to the next level of biology classes. So if you want to get into uh, cell biology or genetics in the second year as a biology major, you have to earn a C in this class or above. Same as uh, also the same with the evolution course um, that uh, first year students take in biology. Any other questions? Hopefully you'll have, um, hopefully you'll learn a lot in this class, of course, but hopefully you'll also um, find the course enjoyable. It's what we call a survey course in biology. And, and what that means is we touch on a lot of topics. We sort of introduce a lot of concepts in this class in biology um, without going tremendously deep into any one topic. Um, so if, you, uh, if you're interested in biology, um, certainly if you're majoring in biology, um, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll find the class enjoyable. And the laboratory students generally tell me that they enjoy the laboratory exercises because um, they're practical. The kinds of experiments that we're gonna do um, are quite practical and, um, and uh, interesting in terms of the results they generate. Any other questions? All right, very good. All right, so I'm gonna see you again on Thursday afternoon. And on Thursday, we're gonna have our first lecture. We're gonna talk about the science of biology. Um, so when you come on Thursday, just you know, have your notepad ready and, um, and we'll start right into that topic. And if there aren't any more questions, I'm gonna let you go. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I will see you on Thursday. All right. See you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. see everyone. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.